Hi, my name is Dr. Sean Piddock. I'm Professor of Neurology at Mayo Clinic. I also co-direct the Neurominology Laboratory with Van der Lennen. And today I'm going to be talking to you about a paper that's uh, coming out in the March issue of Clinical Gastroenterology and Hepatology and is entitled Intractable Nausea and Vomiting from Autoantibodies Targeting a Brain Water Channel. Uh, this paper will be of interest to gastroenterologists because it outlines a novel mechanism uh, behind uh, intractable vomiting, nausea, and hiccups. In order to understand uh, this entity, I'd like to introduce you to a term called neuromyelitis optica or neuromyelitis optica spectrum disorders. These are inflammatory, demyelinating central nervous system disorders. They're characterized by recurrent episodes of optic neuritis or spinal cord inflammation called transverse myelitis. The spectrum of the disease has evolved since the identification of an antibody called NMOIgG that targets a water channel, aquaporin-4, on astrocytes in the brain. At Mayo Clinic, we have performed extensive analyses and studies of patients with this condition, and we observed that a significant proportion of patients seem to complain of intractable vomiting, nausea, with or without hiccups, preceding the onset of their optic neuritis or transverse myelitis. We actually observed this in approximately 12% of all patients with this condition. I would like to now introduce Dr. Van der Lennen, the discoverer of aquaporin-4 antibodies. The antibody of particular pertinence to this study was discovered in a subset of patients who were thought to have multiple sclerosis originally. And the antibody uh, was staining in a very distinctive way uh, at the blood-brain barrier in sections of mouse tissue that we use as substrate. Uh, our research laboratory then took up this project about 14 years ago and we came up with the antigen being not a component of myelin or uh, oligodendroglia, but actually a plasma membrane water channel, the aquaporin-4 water channel. Um, and this antibody is now recognized to cause neuromyelitis optica and a spectrum of disorders. Neuromyelitis optica was classified 110 years ago as affecting exclusively the optic nerve and the spinal cord and spurring the brain. In fact, we now recognize through the um, unification by this antibody's presence that there are many other disorders, uh, circumventricular organs, for example, um, syndrome of anti inappropriate antidiuresis may be a presentation, or intractable nausea and vomiting. And Dr. Pitak will tell you about the clinical correlative side of this, but we've found that the aquaporin-4 is very enriched in the flora of the fourth ventricle in association with our neurologist and pathologist colleague, Dr. Claudia Luganetti, and patients can sometimes present with intractable nausea and vomiting at the outset. They're thought to have a GI problem and yet they have this antibody and the presence of this antibody predicts that they are going to relapse not necessarily with nausea and vomiting but they're going to relapse with aggressive form of recurrent optic neuritis and transverse myelitis. In this study 10 of 70 patients with NMO spectrum disorders had intractable vomiting and nausea with or without hiccups as their initial presenting complaint. The intractable vomiting lasted from 1 to 90 days and preceded the development of either optic neuritis or transverse myelitis by up to 720 weeks. The majority of patients presented initially to general internists or gastroenterologists and many of them underwent extensive evaluations for their vomiting. The importance of this paper is to make gastroenterologists and general internists aware of a central etiology for intractable vomiting. It's important to note that if you see a patient that has intractable vomiting of unclear etiology in which there does not appear to be a gastroenterologic cause, consider the possibility of aquaporin-4 autoimmunity. It's important to recognize this condition early 
because early immunosuppressant therapy can prevent attacks of this disease and lead to a much better outcome for patients.